Hey everybody, what's up? Mr. Dissonance here for HOSNG.com and I thought I'd make like a short video, $30 hypers and here in position against an unknown player I'm going to limp most of my hands not big on folding, even something um, as bad as 3-4 I feel I can make a profit with. Alright, he's called me, which is interesting. Don't expect much ASEX in his range uh, he definitely have King X or a 2, a couple of diamonds, so I'm going to barrel that spot and we'll just have a look at it afterwards in the replay and we'll talk about why we think that's a good barreling spot. Ah, 3-4 again, lovely. What did they have last time? 4-5. And he jams, so very happy that I didn't uh, min-raise it. He's looking a little bit aggressive here and he's looking very aggressive. So once someone jams over my min, uh, jams over my limp and then open shoves, he's looking a bit on the aggressive side. I might try and induce by limping here, which didn't work, but we did pick up a nice set. Only problem is he checked really quickly, so I'm going to check back here. And then I'm going to raise him on the turn. Hope that he's hit something, which he has. And he checked really quickly again, I'll try 60. Ah, oh, yeah, he folded. You can tell from this guy's timing tells um, when he has something and when he doesn't, I think. Alright, pick up a nice flop, but I think it's kind of so strong that me... Uh, like, it's so dry that me betting is not going to make a whole lot of sense. I'll just try and slow play it. And don't shove me, please. Okay. Yep, um, that's why we check back those dry flops to induce action from people. And even at 30s it still works. I'm going to min raise this and not limp it because I don't want him to shove over my limp. And here we are down at 9 big blinds. He's limping. I wonder if I led if it would work. Just that I don't think he's going to limp much that hits this sort of range. I think he'd be jamming it. Alright, get it in good. And no love, which is fine. But we've certainly created a bit of EV so far. I might time down a little bit and limp and see if that affects his uh, timing. Nope. He just snap folded. And did he wait a beat there like he's got a 5 or a 2? Yes, he did. So it looks like the 2. Okay. I think from this guy's timing, you could literally work out when he's got a hand and when he hasn't. Snap check. So we're going to start barreling. Yep. Amazing how important the timing tells are. I'm going to open jam this. Hope you don't run into a better hand, which is good. I just don't want to like min raise and have him flat call me or something like that. And same thing for this. Like these ace X's and low pocket pairs, you're better off open jamming because you don't want to get flat and have to play them post flop. You're not going to hit a set that often. All right, this is a tricky spot where my hand is now worthless, <laughs> and uh, I actually might bet it for value. Okay, um, he just checked so quickly, he didn't look very strong to me, which he wasn't. And super quick check again, which is really nice of him when he doesn't have anything. And slight pause when he does have something, which always works. And he looks a little bit passive post-flop, so we're certainly going to give him some respect when he's got something. Or when he bets, is what I mean. And in this spot, we've got to think about his overall range. He can have so many... Um, I meant to bet 60 here. Oh, what's he got? Wow. Um, he can have so many... Uh, I'll explain that hand later. I'm going to go through the replay. Alright, 
so we'll see if he wants a rematch, which I doubt. Okay, let's go through the replay. That was a really cool uh, little hand, hit, uh, little match there, which we can learn something from. And that is not the replayer, you goose. This kind of is, but it's not the one I want. Um, okay, and then visualize. Yay, I got it. All right, not as silly as I look. All right, so let's start off here with this limped hand. All right, we bet and we get cold. And then the question is, what do we think that his uh, range is for calling us on the flop? So I'm thinking that in a limped pot, he won't have much ace X or king X. And he knows that um, I probably don't either. So if he flat calls me, it's, calls me, it's most likely the two, possibly some sort of draw, like, uh, you know, jack 10 or something like that. Queen 10 is possible or a flush draw. So this nine is going to put the weak draws like jack 10 and queen 10 under pressure and hopefully make them fold. And it'll make the two fold. He doesn't have many aces or kings, we think. So therefore it's a good barrel card for us. And we bet it and get the fold. So that explains why I barrel this spot here. Um, also, as I mentioned before, I think it's profitable for me to be limping these poor hands. All right, uh, not much happened on this one. All right, this one here, we limp our pocket fives because he'd been um, quite aggressive and min raise also would have made sense. And why did I check it back? It's a wet flop. Why would I check this back? Because he gave me a timing tell when he just snap checked. And I believe that made him weak. All right, let's get this game a bit faster. All right, then he bets the turn. And this is the time where I feel I should raise. Um, if I raise now, I'm getting value from 6x that won't fold and stuff like 8, 9 and 9, 10 and obviously jack x. And in case I have got it wrong, he's got a seven or something, he'll also call me. So by raising here, I get my value. The value spot on most hands is the turn. And this is the spot where you need to be getting value by raising people, not flat calling, unless they're a good reg or something, where they're going to keep barreling you. And then river bet size, I might have even tried small, like 40 or 50. He looks really weak there. All right, let's see the next one of value. All right, so this one here, um, I min raise and he flats and the flop comes down ace four four. And you might think, well, I have to bet this, I have to be balanced. No, you don't have to be balanced against an unknown player at the 30s um, who's sitting second, basically what I'm trying to say is a recreational player. If I bet here, I'm just getting folded a lot of the time. Against the reg, of course, I'd always bet. But against an unknown player, I just check back and then he starts probing the turn, which is lovely. And then betting the river. I don't think I'm getting any value out of raising here. Like the, the only possible hand that might call me is an eight. And me just flat calling, um, you know, sort of pop controlling. And I got two streets of value, 120 chips there by checking back this flop. I'm pretty sure that most of the time people are folding if I bet. All right. Other important hands. Um, I'd noticed that uh, I hadn't been raising very much and normally this is a hand that I would limp but I want to take advantage of my image of not raising and raise this hand to pick up the immediate fold equity which works pretty well. All right, next one. Oh, this one here was kind of cool too. So he limps at nine big blinds and when the flop comes down queen, queen, jack, I'm thinking it's not going to hit his limping range that much. I mean, I think he's really weak to be limping here and I don't mind probing and just trying to take it down, which worked really well. Well, which would work if I could hit the button. All right. So King eight, pretty standard jam. And let's have a look at the rest of it. Um, this one here, he gave me a timing tool that he had something, um, which then turned out to be true when you bet the turn. I'm pretty sure it's the two there. So snap, give that up. Don't fall in love with your ace king. It's, uh, you know, once it's dead, it's dead. All right. Nothing happened. And I think there was like maybe another interesting hand or am I incorrect? All right. So I'm doing a lot of limping in this, which is working fine. 
And where's the one where we finally catch him? Oh, yeah, this is a really cool hand. Um, okay, so we limp. All right, and we lead out. Don't expect him to have any ace x at 10 big blinds or 11 big blinds. If he's got an ace x here, congratulations, you've now owned my soul. So when he flat calls me, I think he's not going to have 7, 10, or 10 jack. That's not so likely. Most likely he has a 9 or an 8. All right, now on the turn, this king of clubs, also a card I don't expect him to have very much of. So I actually wanted to bet like 60 here, but it was too lazy to type it uh, and bet 80. All right, get called. And then the third king means he almost certainly does not have a king at this stage. So what I'm actually trying to do is if he has 9x, I'm trying to get him to fold it by jamming. And obviously, because we're going to be chopping. So that's why I jam all in here. And he actually makes the call with, what is it, fourth pair or something, which was uh, lucky for me. But I got, uh, I'm doing this to either, to force out the nine chop. That's the, uh, the reason I'm jamming here and take the whole pot. And it just, the added bonus was that he turned out to have an eight and I got um, full value out of the eight. All right, pretty cool little game there. Let's go play another one and see how that goes.